So next, guys, is Half-Life Alex, which of course is the newest addition to the Half-Life franchise from Valve that they announced as their flagship VR game, which is very interesting. And now I want to talk about everything that we know so far about the game, which is pretty exciting. I mean, obviously, we know quite a bit now from just watching the reveal trailer for the game. But I found an article, guys, that I thought was pretty good from PC Gamer. It was written by Andy Kelly. It's 12 Big Things We Learned About Half-Life Alex. And I want to give you guys some of my thoughts on it. Half-Life, for those of you wondering, is a game in which I've, I personally, uh, I really only played Half-Life 2. Never played the first one, but Half-Life 2 I thought was a really great game. I didn't think that it was... I wasn't as high on the game as everybody else was, or it felt like everyone else was, you know, thinking it was one of the, you know, just, just one of the best games ever. I thought it was good. I just didn't, I wasn't as high on it as, as some people. Um, I, I don't know why. Maybe, you know, I was, you know, I was obviously younger and I just didn't like, wasn't as interested in it as some people. But that being said, I, I can honestly say from watching the reveal trailer, that this has really intrigued me into playing Half-Life again and possibly getting a VR headset, which I don't own one at this point, but it's definitely piqued my interest in that because, man, the graphics look really good. It looks like a pretty damn good game, I'm not going to lie. But let's talk about the 12 big things we learned. Alex Vance returns in Valve's new VR prequel due in March of 2020. So that right off the bat, guys, March of 2020, that's not too far away. So we're going to be finding out about this game very, very soon. Um, the release date is March of 2020. You can play Half-Life Alex in March 2020, although no exact release date has been set yet. The game re will retail at $60.00 but is free to anyone who owns a Valve Index VR headset. And Valve's VR uh, Index VR headset is uh, is relatively expensive guys. Just so you know, it's one of the higher brand uh, like the higher priced brands when it comes to VR headsets. It's Valve's biggest project yet. <clears throat> Remarkably, this is the biggest group of people Valve has ever had working on the development of a single game. It's been in development for a long time, according to Gunpoint creator and former PC gamer editor Tom Francis. Half-Life Alex is the largest game we've had yet, Valve designer Greg Coomer tells us. About a third of the people on the project have worked on previous Half-Life games, some all the way back to the first Half-Life. Coomer adds that new employees, including those from recently acquired Firewatch developer Campo Santo, have played an important part in bringing fresh perspectives, which has always been a crucial part of our process. So right off the bat, where it says that a third of the people on the project have worked on previous Half-Life games, that right there has got me half-sold already because... When you hear that there are people that have, are working on this game that worked on previous Half-Life games, that tells me that these are people in which know the franchise, they know it, the, the world in which they are dealing with, and it's very delicate to a massive following, so that's a very reassuring. That feels That makes me feel really, really good about this, because if you think about it, if you didn't have those people or a lot of people that worked on Half-Life before, you kind of wonder, are they going to go in a completely different direction? Is it going to really feel like Half-Life? Is it going to feel like a spin-off of it? What's it going to feel like? And I can tell you guys just by watching the reveal trailer, it looks and it kind of feels from just watching it like Half-Life. Uh, we didn't set out to make a Half-Life game, Robin Wal Walker, programmer on Half-Life Alex told IGN. Valve began experimenting with VR using assets from Half-Life and Portal, though the movement and momentum of the latter wasn't suitable for VR. Half-Life was. Initially, it was only a brief Half-Life VR experience, but that changed in large part to the reactions of playtesters. As we started to put people through this 15-minute prototype, Walker told Jeff Knightley, 
uh, Keely, they would spend 45 minutes in, in it doing a bunch of stuff that we never really that we never really saw. <laughs> they exhibited a bunch of behaviors we never really seen players exhibit in the, in the sort of flat screen 2D desktop environment. Here's the Half-Life Alex system requirements. There, of course, is the, 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 the requirements. I'm not really going to read that off screen. It sounds like a proper Half-Life game, and it's, it's as long as Half-Life 2. So Valve promises that Half-Life Alex will feature all the hallmarks of classic Half-Life, including world exploration, puzzle solving, visceral combat, and an int intricately woven story that connects it all with the characters iconic to the Half-Life universe. The story is set between the events of Half-Life and Half-Life 2 and sees Alex and her father Eli secretly mounting a resistance to the brutal occupation of Earth by the Combine, mysterious invading aliens. As Alex, players take the fight to the Combine to save the future of humanity. So welcome back to City 17. One screenshot shows the Combine stronghold, the Citadel, under construction with hunter choppers carrying large metal panels toward it. Another screenshot shows what look like proto-Combine Metrocops pointing their guns at Alex while a city scanner, one of the photo-taking robots from Half-Life 2, hovers behind them. We also see Combine barricades blocking off streets in the city. So one thing that I want to point out here, guys, is that the story is set between the events of Half-Life and Half-Life 2. So there's rumor that what they're going to do is this is going to be kind of the reintroduction to the Half-Life franchise in a VR setting, and then they're going to continue with Half-Life 3. Obviously, that's all speculation. That's something that we don't know for sure, but it's something that's certainly being talked about at this point. Some speculated that Half-Life Alex might be a short demo for Valve's new VR hardware, Valve Index, but it's actually a full-length game. According to the studio, internal playtesters have taken about as long as it takes to finish Half-Life 2 to get through the entirety of Half-Life Alex. Valve designer Greg Coomer also adds that some players take much longer as they choose to more deeply explore and interact inter Act with the environment. So we're looking at least 20 hours of play here, which is a significant chunk of time, especially for a VR game. I agree 100%. 20 hours inside of a VR game. I've never played that long of a VR game in my life. Uh, so that would be very interesting. It's the first Half-Life with a voiced hero. Half-Life hero Gordon Freeman, of course, never utters a word, but Alex will have plenty to say when you play as her in Half-Life Alex. Early on, we decided it was important that playing as Alex felt different to playing as Gordon Freeman, says Coomer. Alex being an active participant in conversations made it much, much easier to incorporate narrative into the game in natural ways and as a result there's a higher density of storytelling over the course of the game uh, and a new actor is playing Alex so uh, the new uh, the new character or or I should say uh, new actor is Ozi uh, Ozioma Akaga I believe is how you say it I don't I actually don't know to be honest with you G-Man and other familiar characters return. Maybe it's not a surprise. It's hard to imagine a Half-Life game without the mysterious G-Man who even appeared in the mostly Gordon Freeman-less Half-Life opposing force and Blue Shift. But it's great to have it confirmed and once again G-Man will be voiced by Mike Shap uh, Shaprino. Shapiro? Yeah, Shapiro. We'll also see the return of the alien Vortigots, once again voiced by Tony Todd. Ellen McLean, the voice of Gladys in the Portal series, is returning as the sinister synthesized voice of the Combine Overwatch. Alex's father, Eli Vance, will make an appearance, although he's been recast after the sad death of his original voice, Robert Guglielmi, in 2017. 
The new voice of Eli James Moses Black has big shoes to fill, says Coomer, but we're all excited about his performance and can't wait for players to hear it. Black has appeared in This Is Us and 24 Legacy, among many other film and television roles. So Alex will have gravity gloves before the zero point energy field manipulator was invented and given to Gordon Freeman in Half-Life 2. Alex had gravity gloves. We can assume these can be used in a similar fashion as the gravity gun to lift, pull, and throw objects around. But there's probably a lot more you can do with them in VR. A screenshot also shows them displaying what we assume is Alex's health status. Three hearts are shown on the left hand glove. How far we've come from Jurassic Park trespassers uh, health meter. <laughs> uh, but that being said, the gravity gloves are pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Uh, these gravity gloves look pretty sick. Uh, very high tech, and I, I love the way in which you can utilize those grav spikes or these grav grav spikes, gravity gloves. Uh, to it seems to be able to get like a weapon if you want, and you, there's a sequence where you are able to use the uh, the gravity gloves. It looks like you know the mag magnetic. Uh, force from it to uh, get you know your gun as well as uh, the clip and such really cool uh mark laidlaw is involved uh kinda the original half-life writer is somewhat involved uh, there will be head crabs. The idea of a head crab lunging at you in virtual reality sounds horrifying. So, of course, they will feature in Half-Life Alex. Little known fact, it's actually legal, illegal to make a Half-Life game without head crabs, says Coomer. Also, the only reason we invested years of time, money, and effort into VR was so we could make a head crab leap at people's faces. Alex's store page on Steam notes that you'll be able to rip head crabs off your face and throw them at Combine Soldiers. So that's pretty neat. Gabe Newell is excited. Uh, so uh, Gabe Newell, virtual reality has energized us, the Valve founder says. We've invested a lot of, uh, of ourselves in the technology but we're also game developers at heart and to be devoting ourselves to a VR game. This ambitious is just as exciting. So Gabe Newell guys, obviously the valve uh, founder, he's excited. So that's really good. You can play it with any PC based VR headset. So this is really cool as well. Half-Life Alex is undoubtedly optimized for the Valve Index and its knuckle controllers, but Valve isn't limiting the hardware you can play it on. It'll be compatible with the HTC Vive, Wind Windows Mixed Reality, Oculus Rift, and Oculus Quest if you have the PC Link cable. It'll also support room scale, standing, or sitting play, and includes three movement options, teleportation, shift, which means you smoothly zoom between points and regular analog stick walking and running owners of any part of the valve index kit including just the controllers will get half-life alex free those who own any index hardware before the end of 2019 will get a few bonuses including alternate gun skins to embellish alex's arsenal It'll be Steam Workshop compatible too, according to the official site. A set of Source 2 tools for building new levels will be available for the game, enabling any player to build and contribute new environments for the community to enjoy. Hammer Valve's level authoring tool has been updated with all of the game's virtual reality gameplay tools and components for anyone wondering if there will be will ever be a non-vr version of half-life alex it looks like the answer is no the comple complexity going on there there it's just hard to we would have to map an entire section of the keyboard dedicated just interacting with doors if we wanted to have that kind of functionality, Valve's Dario Casali told Jeff Keighley. The more we explored those mechanics, the more we realized that in order for us to deliver a keyboard and mouse experience, we'd have to ship a game that's missing a lot of those interactions, and they were playtesting so well that we didn't feel like that was a good idea. So I do want to talk about this, Half-Life Alex being just on VR. 
not that I think it's a bad thing. Um, what I will say is kind of go back to what I was saying about how I feel that this is kind of the flagship VR game that's set to kind of reintroduce Half-Life to us. And I think a Half-Life 3 is going to be set, you know, is going to be something that we may get in a few years. Um, but what I am going to say about it is there's been a lot of conversation from people about will this get a lot of people to buy uh, the VR headsets? I don't think so. Um, I, I think a lot of people will buy the, the VR headsets to play this game, but I think the steep price of the VR headsets is, it's just too expensive. And I think that what's really going to get people to start getting VR is if they're like included with your console, if they're included with like a PC, um, which I know that I believe like with the PlayStation, some of the PlayStations have a VR headset that are included with them certain versions, but I think that if Half-Life Alex was free, if you bought one of the, the one of the VR headsets, I think that might be a different story. I know it's free if you get the the Valve Index VR headset, but that one's very expensive. I'm just saying in general, if it were free with any of the different uh, VR headsets, if it was just like a free to play game, kind of like, you know, Fortnite or something along those lines, I think that we would see a lot more people getting the VR headsets. I think that this is kind of a step in the right direction for VR. I do not think that it is going to kind of change, you know, how we, you know, I, I don't think it's going to change that, you know, there's going to be, you know, a significant amount more people are like everyone is getting a VR headset because of this game. I don't think we're at that point as of yet. I may be wrong, but I'd like to hear from you guys in the comment section below. Half-Life Alex. this leads me into the next thing, which is pretty good. Um, Half-Life Alex probably won't be the last we see of Half-Life in the near future. We've established that as a prequel, Half-Life Alex isn't actually Half-Life 3. However, that doesn't mean that the game whose name is essentially a gaming prayer is off the table. The Verge asked designer David Speyer if this was a full return to Half-Life and if we could expect more games in the series now that Valve has finally brought it out of stasis. It's probably no surprise that many people at Valve have been wanting to get back to the Half-Life universe for a long time, Speyer said. And this experience has only re reinforced that. He elaborates explaining that Valve has explored, explored new ways to tell stories in the Half-Life world and new gameplay experiences it can create for players. Of course, we'll have to wait and see how people react to Half-Life Alex once it's out, but we'd love to continue pushing forward, Speyer said. So there you have it. Guys, I'm not going to lie. This is exciting. And this is pretty much everything that we know so far because Half-Life 3, I'm going to say right here on the Ape Low Show, is going to be coming. I think it's going to come because I think people are going to like Half-Life Half Alex. They, people might not say it's like the best, you know, game ever. They might say, though, that it's the best VR game ever made. And that could really push us into Half-Life 3 and that being completely and utterly echoed into existence. If it's not already you know, been greenlit at this point. It very well might be at that point. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about Half-Life Alex? Are you excited for it? Are you planning on getting the VR headset or one of those VR headsets to play the game? I would love to hear from you guys and see how many of you are actually buying the headsets or planning on getting one to play this game. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.